right? So we have all been there. You decide to go for stochastic calculus because the alternatives are terrible. You get the lecture notes and it's hard to escape the Ito's lemma. It looks familiar and strange at the same time. Then comes the lecture. The professor writes down Taylor's series up to second order instead and then announces that if you make these substitutions, then you get Ito's lemma. The trick does work, but there will always be someone asking the question, why is dw times dt equal to zero? Or why is dt squared equal to zero? The answer would vary, but could be as simple as saying if dt is 0 0.1, dt squared will be 0 0.01. So as you reduce the size of the interval and go infinitesimal, dt squared goes to zero faster than dt. And similar story goes for dw times dt. If I were the professor, I would do the same. And if you do venture to explain, then you'll get complaints that the professor wasn't able to explain this in simple words. It's always one. I'm not a professor, by the way, and we are here to understand things in our own time. So we can venture. So let's see. In what sense is dw times dt equal to zero? The other two will follow the same logic, so I'm not going to repeat the explanation for each of them, knowing you'll find it boring. Firstly, there's no such thing as this differential, dw times dt. It represents this integral, but it's written in differential form, so that with a few fudges we can use what we have learned in deterministic calculus instead of starting afresh. Same goes for the other two expressions. So as agreed, let's focus on dw times dt. Now remember, integration is best introduced as the limit of discrete sum. So you take the interval from 0 to t and let's say divide it into n sub intervals of length delta t. So you split the interval and let's represent the n points of the intervals by ti's with i going from 0 to n, the number of sub intervals. And one can then approximate the integral via sum of delta w times delta t over these sub intervals hoping that as we increase the number of sub intervals the approximation will give the value of the integral by the way delta w and delta t are just the changes in the value of w and t over the sub intervals so easy to calculate once one has a brownian path over time now to turn things into something familiar let's replace delta w times delta t by x and let's represent the sequence by big X. Now in calculus, we are quite used to limits of sequences. And let's say the limiting value is X, nice and easy. But this limit won't do here. Reason being, our X's are random variables. So there's some probability associated with them. But the limit we have doesn't contain any probability. And stochastic calculus, one talks about convergence. And there are several modes of such convergence, some easier to prove than others. The most common one used in the stochastic integration problem we have here is mean square convergence. So mean square convergence is what we're going to use. We say the sequence xn converges to x in the mean square if the expected value of the square deviation from x goes to zero as n becomes very large. We are claiming that our sequence converges to zero, so we replace x by zero, and now we can replace xn by the sum, and we are done with the capital X. We only introduce this symbol so that we can see all we are doing is taking the limit of a sequence in some sense. Now we can split the square of the sum into square and cross terms. So this is just a multivariate version of a plus b squared a squared plus b squared is captured by the first term and then obviously 2ab is captured by the second term. Let's make the substitution and we can now replace x by delta w times delta t. Expectation of the sum is the sum of expectations and we took delta t out of the expectation because it's deterministic. And now we just need the properties of the Brownian increments. Brownian increments and non-overlapping intervals are independent. So the second term is zero. And then expected value of delta w squared is equal to the length of the sub-interval. 
and we can combine the delta t term so we get delta t cube now as n becomes very large this goes to 0 to c let's consider the time interval from 0 to 1 let's say we start with n equal to 1 as there is only one interval the length of the interval from 0 to 1 is obviously 1 delta t to the power 3 means we take the cube of 1 which gives 1 now let's increase n to 2 so the length of each sub interval is now 0 0.5 and we have two of them if we calculate the cube of delta t and sum across the intervals we get 0 0.25 so the sum of delta t to the power 3 has declined from 1 to 0 0.25 as we doubled n from 1 to 2 now let's double n again to 4 so 4 sub intervals each of length 0 0.25 and if we calculate the cube of delta t and each sub interval and sum across intervals we see it has declined again and now if we double the number of sub intervals to 8 so each sub interval is now up length 0 0.125 and if we calculate the cube of delta t and sum it we see the sum has declined if we continue increasing n we will see the sum of delta to the power 3 will go to 0 and we thus conclude that the integral of dw times dt goes to 0 in the mean square and this is what they mean when they say dw times dt is equal to 0 now you can go and apply the same logic to dt squared which should be slightly simpler and dw squared which is slightly complicated please give a thumbs up if you would like us to continue the series and i look forward to seeing you in the next